Lord Jesus, bless the eyes and ears of the listeners. And I plead the blood on this in the name of Jesus. I plead your blood, Jesus, on this lesson in the name of Jesus. Amen. All right, y'all. Since we've been talking about good and bad angels, and since Biden keeps talking about him, let's find out what he's talking about. So turn to Revelation chapter 12. And for those of you that are asking, this is the Zoom information. It's the same ID and password as long as we're on Zoom. Okay? 212-296-8996. It's at 7 p.m. Eastern time. We're going to do it tonight. I have no specific night yet. This is the password. Little G. Big Z, Big M, Big G, 7 0. Let me fix this so you can tell that's a 7. 7 0, okay? So I could take up to 100 people. All right. So let's read chapter 12 of Revelation, verse 7. And war broke out in heaven. Michael and his angels fought with the dragon, and the dragon and his angels fought. But they did not prevail, nor was a place found for them in heaven any longer. So the great dragon was cast out, that serpent of old called the devil and Satan, who deceives the whole world. He deceives the whole world. Okay, remember that word deceives. Even the elect, if it were possible. Okay, he was cast to the earth. And his angels were cast out with him. Then I heard a loud voice saying in heaven, Now salvation and strength and the kingdom of our God and the power of his Christ have come. For the accuser of the brethren, which is Satan, who accused them before God day and night, has been cast down. And they overcame him by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of their testimony. And they did not love their lives to the death. Okay. Hold on a minute. All right. So here's what's going on with this. So Satan's primary weapon against us is what? Accusation. That's what he's been doing day and night before the th- God accusing us. Of whatever. He uses guilt and condemning thoughts. You know, he tries to control and ultimately defeat mankind. And we are guilty. Okay. We're some guilty people and he knows it. And he knows that we know it. So he does everything he can do to rub it in our faces. You know, if if we understand that the blood has paid the price for our sin and has thereby set us free, then we need to no longer listen to accusations, whether they're true or false, that will tear us apart inside that guilt of your past. Many of you I talk to has that guilt. Will God forgive me? Can I be forgiven? Have I done the unforgivable sin? I did some really bad stuff. You know what? I did some really bad stuff too, okay? All the way to where I I tried to kill myself, took my life. You know, life is very precious to the Lord, very precious. So we all have done some bad stuff. We often fail to understand how God has provided victory for us over Satan through Jesus' blood. Fail to understand that. But when Satan's demons come against us, we have to recognize that the blood of Jesus has satisfied all the changes against us. Okay? Okay. This has accomplished three things for us. Write this down. Number one, we're going to do this, our Zoom class here, and we're just going to talk on Zoom tonight. Um, This accomplished three things for us. Number one, the blood unites us. Put that, the blood unites us. Um. Where am I at? In fellowship with the Father. I'll say God. Just keep writing it out. Um, so the blood unites us in fellowship with the Father. Number two, the blood 
gives us power. So the blood unites us with God. It gives us power to defeat the enemy. No, I'm writing fast, y'all. Okay, and it gives us blood. That's what I said to defeat. And the blood gives us power. Put power over. I can't see. Over our own sins. Sorry about my chicken scratch, y'all. So the blood unites us in fellowship with the Father. Number two, the blood gives us power to defeat the forces of darkness, Satan and his enemy, I mean, his uh, crew. And number three, the blood gives us power over our own sins and our own sinful nature. Okay? So the blood has established an, um, a, a, a very clear bond with the sovereign God that prevents Satan from separating the embattled Christian from God's eternal and complete resources, okay? He cannot separate us from God. If you use the blood of Jesus, the power that you have within you, okay? So there's a war. It's talking about here in the invisible realm. So in the unseen dimension or the invisible realm, there's, there, there's a battle between the forces of God and the forces of Satan. Well, I should write this down. Revelation 12, we're talking about 7 through 11. War. You see that word, war? Satan's all about war. He's warring in the Bible. He's warring. He's bringing war to us, you guys, right now. Satan's all about war. So, Michael, who was a very powerful archangel, uh, gets in a fight with Satan and the fallen angels. Okay, Satan and his angels get cast out of heaven when they rebelled. They got cast out of heaven when they rebelled against God. And they often used their, their power to energize violence and energize immorality and to energize war, murder, hatred, racism, persecution of Christians. They want to energize all that and other antichrist activities. So believers in Jesus Christ have been given the awesome power and privilege of waging war in this invisible realm through what? Write it down. Prayer, praise, worship, intercession, and fasting. Write that down. Um, prayer, praise, worship, intercession. So we've been given the power and privilege of waging war in the invisible realm through prayer, praise, worship, intercession, fasting. So therefore, the ordinary Christian can effectively wage war in this unseen world that directly affects the physical world. As we're going to we're seeing this. We're seeing this, okay? So two primary ways that believers can defeat the powers of darkness is through the blood of the lamb and the word of their testimonies is what is said in verse 11. Okay. So one of Satan's key areas of attack is to accuse you, the Christian, before the throne room of God by pointing out your sins and your failures. That's what he does. But believers in Jesus... We have had our sins and our failures cleansed by the blood of the Lamb. So, the believers who know this reality, um, and we learn, we learn how to overcome Satan in this area once we know this reality. Also, we, the believers, our personal testimonies that Jesus Christ is God and that God destroys the devil's deception over other people because Christians are living proof that God exists, and that he is good. Okay, so I want to go on to number 12. It says, therefore, rejoice, O heavens, and you who dwell in them. Woe to the inhabitants of the earth and the sea, 
For the devil has come down having great wrath, which God told me about three or four months ago that has happened. That war has happened. Okay, so when we see so much confusion and evil in our world, because Satan knows his days are numbered and that he doesn't have much time left before God sends him to hell forever. Okay, so he's trying to do as much damage as he can now. And as a result, we note an increase in crime, immorality, witchcraft, the occult, racism, violence. Okay, we, we, the breakdown of, of families, homosexuality, violence, war, racism, strife, all this stuff. We see this increasing. Why? Because we are in the beast system. Okay? Mankind has turned their backs on God and Satan is unleashing hellish forces before the end right now. So it's the believer's job to counteract with militant spiritual warfare by what? Putting on your armor, you need to declare war. Let's read verse 17. And the dragon was enraged with the woman. And he went to make war with the rest of her offspring who keep the commandments of God and have the testimony of Jesus Christ. Uh, Who is the offspring? Us, the Christians. Okay, so Satan is furious with individual believers in Jesus Christ who stand up for God. Okay, he's he hates you. Okay, there's a stand up for, for Jesus Christ. So he ha- he has launched an assault against us. And we the believers, we need to realize that the enemy wants to destroy our testimony of Jesus Christ. So instead of lying down and playing dead. We need to declare war on the powers of hell and the use of weapons of praise, worship, prayer, and intercession to put the enemy on the run. Okay? So Revelation is not about Satan's power, but it's about Jesus Christ's total and complete victory, which begins right now as the believers wage spiritual warfare. Okay? So you've got to get the armor on. I'm telling you, you've got to get in God's word. You've got to pray. You've got to praise. You've got to worship. Okay, there's so much we got to do. What is what? That's why I changed the name of my channel to, uh, I'm going to go ahead and flip this over to, we are Jesus what? Doers. Because we got to be a doer. We got a lot to do. Some people give their life to Jesus Christ and then they don't do nothing. Nothing. They don't read. They don't study. They don't pray. They don't try to change their life. They don't go after the Holy Spirit. They don't do nothing. What did he say he'll do to those? Oops, shut the door. Shut the door. Okay, we got a lot to do, people. You know, you're saved by grace. I mean, by faith. By his grace. Faith in Jesus Christ. By repenting. Repent. And stop doing those sins. Turn away from them. Tell Jesus, I need you. I can't do this myself anymore. I need you. Now stop doing the junk. Okay, and then you believe it. But I've went over with you what he told me about that word right there. Believe. How important that is. Believe. It means not just to believe, not to just acknowledge what he did on the cross. Believe means that you acknowledge it, you believe it, and you go through his word. You literally sit down and go through his word and you find out how he wants your life to change. And then you do it because you believe he said that we need to do that. Okay? Believe just goes so much further than than just knowing Okay, when you believe, let me put it this way. When you believe, you change. You change. You become a new person. Your attitude changes. The way you talk to people change. 
The way you look at things in life changes. Things you used to enjoy, you change and you don't want to do them anymore because it doesn't make Jesus happy. So when you believe, I just have to put that, believe equals change to a new person. That's what Jesus said that word means. That's what it means to believe, not just to acknowledge something. Okay, so we need to uh, give everything we got to the Lord, especially in these days. We got to put our armor on. Okay, and we got to get ready because we're going to do some spiritual battle. We are seeing the beast. We're seeing the beast. He's not rising. He's here. He's here. All right. I'll see you all at Zoom at six, uh, seven o'clock. Um, well, I don't know what time it is. About an hour. And again, here's the information to sign in. I'll read it out to you one more time. Well, you just have to back the video up because I don't know where I put it at. Here it is. The ID is 212-296-8996. And there's the password. Little G. The rest are capital. ZMG70. 7 p.m. Eastern Time, okay? Um, I can only take up to 100. And listen, y'all, try to remember, when we get to the 30-minute mark, I'll tell you the timer's going off, and maybe you'll see the timer too. We got to start praying. When the time, when it hits the timer, let's stop talking, start praying to wrap it up so we don't get, because it'll shut us off, you know, and I want to end it properly. So think about some of what you need prayer for, if there's something you need to get out and talk about. That's, we're going to do that tonight. All right. God bless each one of you. If you don't know Jesus, ask him to be your savior. And we got to learn, get in his word. That's what he said. That's why I'm breathing today is to get you in his word and to teach it to you as, as much for, to hear his voice and let him teach you. All right. In Jesus name, God bless you all.